one of the one of the struggles that we have sometimes uh, with new coaches is there's a lot of stuff. Obviously, they come in a lot of stuff that they need to be good at, and a lot of stuff that yeah. they are not that good at. Yeah, uh, and it can feel overwhelming, and it can be challenging, uh, like for them to accept it, but also for us to deliver. How do you yeah. guys give feedback in a constructive way? Yes, man, and this is tough too because. Uh, again, Ruth and I were kind of talking about this, but knowing the coach in front of you and knowing how they best receive criticism. Um, and, and I think one of the best things you can do early on is just say, nothing that I say is a personal attack on you, right? Like trying to disarm them right off the bat and just let them know, like, look, I'm trying to give you feedback because I care about you and because I want you to be a better coach. So don't ever take this personally, like you're a bad person, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. It's like, this is something that you, I see you doing that I think if you improve upon it, it's going to make you a better coach. You're going to have better interactions. You're going to have a big, bigger impact with your clients and athletes. So I think that would be number one is trying to disarm them first, yeah. right? Because if their guard is up immediately, if you guys are the bosses and you're like, hey, I need to talk to you, it's like, dude. They're sympathetic fight or flight before you even open your mouth, right? You could be telling them, hey, you're going to get a raise. And they're like, uh, what's coming next? Yeah. So trying to find a way to disarm them first and then figuring out which way they are best at receiving feedback or criticism, right? Like some people, like they just want it straight up. Like, and, and it changes over time too, right? Like when I was a, a younger kid and I wasn't as comfortable or as confident in myself, like I took every kind of criticism negatively and I felt like it was a personal attack on me versus now I'd rather you don't beat around the bush at all. Like just tell me straight up and we can move on and I can figure out what I need to do better. So I would say as a general rule, try and like be a little bit softer with young kids and young coaches because they are, man, they're just trying to figure it out. In a lot of cases, um, even if they walk around with like, you know, the big chest and a lot of swagger. It's like this really rough exterior, yeah. but it's not reflective of how they feel on the inside. Yeah. So that would be my best piece of advice is try and disarm them first and then just be really strategic and, you know, let them know, like, look, this is not a personal attack. It's something that I think, you know, it's just going to help you become a better coach. And I think that's one thing I always try and convey too is like, look, I wouldn't tell you this if I didn't care about you yeah. or if I didn't want to see you grow. And so a lot of times if you come at it from that angle, they're like, oh, okay. Cause we all know, right? Like, like every now and then there's just a giant asshole in our life. That's just rude. And they just want to beat you down for whatever reason. But by and large, the people that, that do like give us honest feedback, it's because they care about us. Mm, yeah. you, know, you don't always want to hear it, but at the end of the day, or, you know, when that person is not in your life anymore, more, more, you're like, damn, but that person really cared and they helped try and shape me and make me a better person. Yeah. Awesome. Ruth, right. you want to say something? Yeah, if I could just kind of yeah. add on to Mike. Um, you know, I think sometimes we try not to hurt their feelings and things and, so I try to, if, if I'm going to get after you about something, I'm going to try to give you a compliment also. And so, you know, I, it's, it's okay to, you know, they have to understand it's, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, everybody makes mistakes. I've been doing this 40 years and I'm still making mistakes. Bill might got to pull me over and say, you can't do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, I think you got to tell them direct and, and they got, they got to be tough enough to accept it. And I think sometimes, you know, we, we're, 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 we're so afraid of offending them or running them off or whatever that we don't, we're not, we're not tough on them. And, and I don't mean yelling and screaming at them in, in front of everybody or, you know, even privately, that's, that's not, that's not it, but, but it's, it's, you know, you got to tell them true and you got to tell them hard because they got, they got to accept it. 
you know, because you, you did this wrong, right? Or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. And so I always try to, I don't know, I guess soften it by giving them a compliment first, maybe. And then, or, or even at the end, you know, give them, give them a compliment, but, but you got to tell them straight up, you know, this is what you did wrong. This was the shit. See? Yeah. And, and things like that. And, you know, if they can't handle it, maybe that's not the business for them. You know, because you it's it's a it's a it's a weeding out process also. Yeah. You know, I want it to be tough. I get you know, I get mad when they're not there all the time. Yeah. You know, and and I and because it's only you know, it's seventeen weeks out of your life. You can do anything for seventeen weeks or whatever. Yeah. Well, I forget how long the thing is, seventeen, I think. Anyway, whatever it is. You know, so get your butt there. Yeah. You know, stay late and and talk and discuss. Yeah. And, um, the, the whole staying late, talking, discussing, uh, being like being genuinely interested. Do you find that that is something that can be cultivated, or they sort of come with it, or don't? Um, I'll, I'll give you my two cents. I think it's that's like curiosity is kind of a harder thing to coach up. You know, like yeah. it's not that it can't be done, but like I don't know. I just find that it's pretty rare that somebody comes in who thinks they know it all and doesn't want to ask questions. And all of a sudden they change, you know, there are certain people, you know, it's like, but they have to be a pretty big person to be able to admit, wow, like I thought I knew all this stuff and man, I had no clue like what I didn't even know. Like I I remember, I hope Bill hears this or watches this at some point because we had this intern this was when it was just Bill and I, and this kid comes in and, you know, Bill was like, he's always onto something. Right. So at this point we were really into like energy systems and, and this kid comes in first day and it was a Monday. So Mondays I worked till like five and Bill would come in after he got off his shift and come in and hang out. And so he starts, you know, giving this kid the up and down and, you know, so he's like, so, uh, Bill says, well, what, how do you feel about what's your confidence level of knowing energy systems? And this kid says very strong. And Bill's like, oh, really? He yeah. says, very strong? He's like, very strong. And I'm like, dude, this kid's done. Done. <laughs> get destroyed. Yeah. And he did for about the next 16 weeks. So it's like you have to – I think you can do it, but it's really hard because it's not just a – it's not like a, a technical thing that you're lacking, right? Yeah. It's like an internal thing where you've got to be able to put your ego aside – humble yourself and say, man, I just don't know everything. And I need to keep asking questions and I need to keep digging deeper. And when I think I've got it figured out, that's when I need to try and blow it up and start over again. Like, I think that's the thing that's so refreshing about Bill is, dude, however many years later, he's still like blowing everything he knows up and trying to piece it back together with a better model. So I want to come back to one thing that you guys said though, and that Ruth said that I think is very important when it comes to feedback or when it comes to managing, uh, whether it's your employees, whether it's managing your members, one of the most important things you can do early on is set expectations. Yeah. 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 And this is something that, that I did, I think a poor job of in the past. Um, it's something that I am always trying to do a better job of now because I find the worst thing you can do is not set a clear expectation because then ultimately if something goes wrong, it's you that is to blame, right? Like you didn't set the expectation or in my case, I didn't set the expectation. So uh, I always try and be very clear up front with our employees, with our staff, what we expect, the standards that we have at IFAST. I mean, our internship, before you even walk in the door, we've got like a 20 page document right? It's literally just like a set of expectations from how we expect you to dress, how we expect you to interact with clients, how we expect you to clean the gym. So that it's very clear. And I think if you do that up front, then it comes down to, okay, does this person really get it? Do they want to uphold the standard or do they not? Yeah. And I think if you can set a clear expectation, if you guys are clear in what it is you want to get out of, whomever it is you're interacting with, 
then it just makes your life so much easier. Versus if it's wishy-washy or you're not clear up front, I think you're just setting yourself up for a lot of pain down the line. I think that's extremely important. Uh, one of the things is we're, uh, we're now adding coaches to a system that we've understood intuitively for a while. So we're, we're trying to catch up with setting our expectations and setting up our education in a way that makes sense. So we have a system they can follow. If yeah. you were flying by the seat of your pants and didn't have that 20 page sheet of expectations, what, what are the minimums that you would set when someone comes in? The, the minimum expectations I would, I would start putting into play are, what I expect client interactions to be like, right? Your members drive your business. So if they are interacting with people improperly or they're not representing you guys at the highest level, that's a huge red flag, right? So they gotta have that. Uh, number two, not that we need like Brad Pitt working here. Obviously I am not Brad Pitt, but it's like, what do you, what do you, what do you, how do you dress for work? Like, Sometimes people never got this, right? Like they don't know what it's like to be professional. So what is your, what is your appropriate attire? How often do you want them to shave? Piercings, tattoos, like all these things. Like how do you want them to look? How do you want them to reflect your business? So that would be another one. Um, a third thing that I would say as well, and this may just be us, but like when it comes to how the gym looks, Jay calls it recruit ready, right? So in college sports, it's coming back to Ruth's world, but in college sports, if recruits are coming in, you want everything to look spotless and amazing, right? We need our gym to look as much like that as possible. Mm -hmm. Now you're never gonna walk into iFast and you know, think it's a big box gym. It doesn't look like that. It's not shiny and chrome. You know, we've got barbells and dumbbells and all that stuff. I want it to have that gym feel, but I don't want it to be like a dingy, just dark place where you're probably gonna get tetanus or MRSA or something, right? So it's like, I want that feel, but it's gotta look clean, right? So if somebody new walks in the door, here's what I always tell my staff. Let's say somebody new walks in the door. They think they wanna train at iFast, but there's nobody at the front desk. So all they do is they pop their head in when they see the gym, is it clean? Does it feel like a place they would work out? And what is the music and the energy like, right? Do they pop their head in and think, yeah, I wanna know more about this? Or do they turn tail and run? So it's like that visual auditory aesthetic. When they walk in, does it feel like a place where they would wanna work out? And I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I just know like, I get on the guys sometimes because like Jay is obsessed with Britney Spears. <laughs> like. It's like Britney Spears radio. So it's like Britney Spears and Shakira and j -Lo. I'm like, dude, like nobody is hyped up to this. Nobody. I would rather just like techno, no words, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. something that gets people going, right? Yeah. I would rather have that than this. Um, we also have some older clients, right? So like 70 plus years old. And sometimes it's just the two of them. It's a husband and wife. And they'll be in there and it'll be like, big bop 60s yeah. and i'm like i get it i get it you're catering to the the population but we also have to think if somebody new came in would they come in and be like man i'm not i'm not training do wop bs like whatever so like those are things that that are always first on my brain you right. know like client interactions appearance do they look professional do they look the part what is the gym vibe so like starting with that stuff because Look, the skills, you can teach that, yeah. right? Like you guys can teach somebody how to squat, how to push up, how to lunge, whatever. You guys can teach those skills, but it's like some of those things that maybe they don't think about as being important to being a coach or to being a business, those things are critical to you guys. So those are some of the standards that I want to set early on.